Welcome into Knit Habits. My name is Christina. I am so glad that you decided to come and join me today in my little corner of the YouTube where I talk about my knitting and crafting. And you can find me on Ravelry as Xtina K Yarny and on Instagram as Xtina underscore Nitta. And I'm so glad to have you guys in today. I know I've had some new subscribers, so welcome into my YouTube channel. The featured shawl on my mannequin here is the Rain or Shine Shawl by Stephen West. Uh, this is completely made out of mohair. And you can check out my Ravelry uh, project page. I have all of the yarn on here. Uh, are on there and it's a mixture of a loft from knit picks and some yarn by uh, yarn the fluff uh, line by trilogy yarns and it's just a really fun slip stitch pattern this thing is very warm and also very very light since it's all made out of mohair so it's really a fun pattern uh, to knit up and mine kind of turned out rainbow, even though I didn't think that that's the way it was going to be. Because you hold, you hold two uh, colors together. Um, so this is like, there's a green and gray, and a purple and green, and then a pink and um, kind of magenta-y color, and then the pink. And this one was actually kind of a green color. So you hold them together, and it kind of... Uh, makes changes the colors a little bit but it's a really fun uh, pattern so um, you can check that out and if you want something lightweight this is definitely a good one uh, I am wearing today my Duchesne by Leela Raven I believe is her name it's a really p fun pattern just wearing it over a dress it is cropped so I'll stand up so you can see it but um, just the the lay the front is got the lace and then this lace border goes all the way around um, and the rest is just stockinette on the back and this Duchesne I made out of uh, Lang yarn Lino couldn't remember that uh, and the colorway is two four seven six zero it's just kind of a rose goldy pinky color and this knit up really fast I believe it's knit on pretty big gauge needles I don't I don't know that I even wrote it on my project page which which needles I use but I oftentimes will wear it over this summer dress um, yeah so it's a really fun easy one that you can just throw on over things I wore it recently with a pair of shorts and just a tank top underneath so yeah the Duchesne is what I'm wearing okay and today I do have two finished objects for you um, the first one is one that I was working on last time and it's out of this biscot yarns in the biz sock and the colorway name um, there you go this stuff let me tell you it is so soft I can't even tell you and it is 100 grams 435 yards it's 85% uh, percent merino superwash and 15% nylon and it is soft and squishy um, the ladies over at uh, ladies over at River City Yarn actually did a whole uh, yarn anniversary um, series on the uh, dyers and creators behind um, Biscot Yarns. They're French Canadian and they have a whole, they go over all of the lines of the yarns that they have and kind of how they got started and all of that. So check out their video. I'll have it linked below. 
It's a really good look at this yarn. And they also explain about, you know, just how soft this yarn is. And I can definitely attest to how soft it is. So I made it out of that. Um, pinks and yellows and um, yeah, kind of a little orange color. So this is the cowl, the Knit Chat cowl. Um, The Knit Chat Cowl by Chit Chat Knits. So there is the cowl. And there you go. Oh, I haven't, I blocked it. I didn't trim my end apparently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but there it is. Um, it's so fun. And I usually don't make more than one of something haven't in the past other than you know vanilla socks but um I knit I cast on another one so I'll show that to you here in a little bit but it's just a really fun um pattern easy to follow well written um and just fun to use and what a nice little piece to put on just you know under a jacket or just around for warmth um just a really nice piece so I have another one of those. And again, it's soft, it's squishy. It really opened up when I blocked it. When you when you knit this, it, you know, of course it's all bunched up on your needles, but um, it really opened up nice. And this is kind of a, I think she calls it a ruching section and then the little eyelet section. So, and then some I think it's five by five or six by six um, ribbing here at the bottom. And then the increases on this center piece right there. So that's finished object number one. Finished object number two is my uh, Paris Toujours by Isabel Kramer. And I made this out of Henry's Attic Peruvian Tweed. Uh, it didn't really have a colorway name on it. Um, here's the tag for it again. Um, there it is. It's 100% alpaca. And I had two skeins of this. And they were each um, 8 ounces, 600 yards. Um, and I have 37.81 uh, ounces left of this, of the second skein. And I did forget to tell you, if you're going to make that knit chat cowl, um, this is a 100 gram skein. And I ended up with 33, a little over 33 ounces left, 33.04. So um, you can definitely make one out of a whole um, skein. For sure and have some leftovers and um, so there's that this um, this thing let me tell you I did make some modifications on it I did not do um, the amount of garter stitch at the end um, that it calls for because it it's enormous um, which I don't mind. I don't mind a big shawl, but it was just getting to a point where it was just going to be 70, I think it was 70 rows of garter stitch at the end. And I just did not, I was, I was done. I was over it, <laughs> but it is beautiful. So there it is. Um, and it just goes on and on and on. And so this is the end where I was at and it called for like 70 rows of garter stitch. And obviously um, I just, it, it was big enough. The wingspan on this is actually uh, 95 inches. My husband and I measured it last night while it was blocking. But this is just gonna be a really gorgeous piece. Um, squishy as can be. Um, and just enormous and probably <laughs> it's probably never going to be cold enough here in North Carolina to, to really truly use this but um, look how gorgeous that is and this is soft and squishy and um, really 
uh, next to skin soft for sure. Um, so one thing I will say about it though is while it's gray, um, maybe after blocking it, it won't shed so much, but I could not, yeah, there's alpaca all over me right now. So I'll stand up. Um, yeah, it's huge, but look how cute that is where it just kind of comes to a point here and the ends are kind of already hidden under there. That's perfect. What a beautiful piece. So that will be a dead of winter <laughs> kind of piece for sure around here. All right. So those are the two finished objects. Um, what else do I have? I do have, uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit here. I do have the Porto Shawlette by Suzanne Summer, the one I'm doing in the Hypnotic Yarn uh, Plush Sock in Shenanigans and the Knit and Bro Yarns Sock Under the Sea. You guys have seen this a bunch of times, so that's the Under the Sea and then the Shenanigans. And I did finish, so I wanted to show it. I did finish the brio section, brioche section, and I started the next sec section, um, but I really haven't done much on it. But there's the brioche section. Um, this is right here, is where I was last time. So I finished all of that yummy, yummy brioche. And I'm starting, you just use uh, the blue color for the next section, at least so far that I've read. I haven't read ahead in the pattern, but um, yeah. So there is that. And the back here. Let's see. There it is. There is the back of it really knitting up beautiful um, but I um, didn't work on it too much but I wanted to show the finished brioche um, on that because I was trying to finish up the um, knit chat cowl I just I really couldn't put that down and I'll show the next one in a second um, and then I really wanted to finish that Paris to Jours by Isabel Kramer so um, going back to that one here a second, I do have somewhere on here. Yeah. So just go to go back to this for a second. This stitch marker right here, right there, is where I was at. So I did all of that between the two um, podcasts. So yeah, just to put that on there. And then the other thing that I worked on a lot uh, was the green crust. And I really wanted to have the um, cable section on the side done. So now I'm going to start the border. But I wanted to show that I got all of the cable repeats done. So all of those beautiful cables there all the way down, all 29 of them um, are done. There you go. And it just has this really pretty garter section on the other side. So now I am going to uh, pick up the border uh, section that goes on there which is all, I believe it's all cables all the way across for the most part and some increases and stuff. So, you know, you could stop here and it's gonna be a beautiful shawl if you didn't wanna do the border, but um, we'll get started on that. But just wanted to show that really fast. This is still that Sirdar uh, Merino Cashmere Silk in um, the colorway Polished Copper, so won't go too much into that. It is on my project page on Ravelry and it'll be linked below. Um, the other thing 
is uh, living in a really cute project pack. Oh, so by the way, not good podcasting today, but um, this is living in my chip basket. So cute. And to be very honest with you, um, I oftentimes will have the book. I just carry it around with the book inside of it. So it just goes right in there. And this is for the um, Dust Em Off Mal by uh, Ruth Loves to Knit. So I just carry it like that. It will come undone because the book is really heavy. So I just kind of have to hold it that way. But um, a lot of stuff fits in here. So it's a really great bag. So that's living in there. This one uh, is a new acquisition um, that my new knit chat cowl is living in. And this is a bag by ha Amy of Happy Little Yarn. And so oh, I have dog hair on it. I um, wanted just to show that off. It's so cute. I just love these colors. Um, and it's a sock, kind of a sock size bag or a hat size bag. It's beautifully made it's just perfect so um got that from amy hi amy and then the knit chat cowl the new one is um right here and this is out of let me unbag this sorry for the crinkle this is freckled whimsy in the serendipity base and this is, um, whoop, there we go. 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in the colorway Olive Juice. And here is what I have. Hold on. So here it is. There's that colorway getting a little bit blown out that's more true to color right there and this is what I have so far just just started but there's a little bit I just started the first eyelet section and did the ribbing and then that like ruched kind of section there so you can see that and this is on what needle this is on a 3.75 or us 5 needle so yeah so that's fun um, and this is one that I want I like I said before when I pick it up I just I want to just knit on that um, so I think this is going to turn into my uh, work knitting because <laughs> um, I do get to work while I'm on the phone or I get do get to knit while I'm on the phone <laughs> I also work while I'm on the phone um, so yeah, now the next thing that I started is the Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter. And um, this is living in my bag uh, from Knit for Brains. Look how cute those little gnomes are. They're so stinking adorable and getting up to all the shenanigans as I love. And this is her uh, wire uh, top bag. So, um, has a cute little pull tab and then um, this is the inside of it so cute and it just opens nice opens up you can just leave it there sit next to you so that you can just um, you know pull out what you need and hold on And this is out of uh, Knit Picks Capretta fingering weight in the Meridian Heather colorway. And this is 230 yards, 50 grams. So there's the Capretta and it is super wash. And there is 80% super wash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. Or is it more? Yeah. And it's super soft, super soft, super squishy. Um, just a really pretty, yeah, that's pretty true to color. Navy blue color. So this is my main color. 
and um, my contrast color is, and I've had these forever. I think this is a discontinued yarn, but um, I've had it for a while and I thought, go ahead and use your stash. And um, currently, <laughs> uh, Spin Cycle is a little bit out of the budget. So I went with this one, which is this Joyland Melody Superwash. It's 100% wool. Uh, it's 50 grams, 220 yards. You can see that. And it's just a really pretty long color changing yarn with different colors in it. Um, and I did take a picture of it with these two next to this to see if there was enough of a contrast. I'll put that up. Um, made sure to take it in black and white and there there's some parts that i'm a little bit nervous like this part with the blue here um that it's not going to be enough contrast we'll see um, i'm hoping that it'll be fine though so that's going to be my alpine bloom by caitlin hunter and this is going to be my rain back sweater I'm very excited um who knows what else i'll take but uh this is i did a gauge swatch uh, in the recommended needle size. So here's my gauge swatch. Um, my gauge was too big. I think I'm supposed to get 22 stitches and I had like 20. So, or no, 24 stitches and I think I had 20. So I went down a needle size. I'm hoping that's going to work. Um, I did not gauge swatch again. One gauge swatch is fine. I hope. <laughs> um, so I just started it the other day, but I got done with the collar, which is this cute lace collar. I love that, you know, it's not just your regular ribbing. That's one of the things that I really loved about it. Um, and then I just started this little color work section. So I have my um, stitch markers denoting there's one part between the um, sections, the color work sections where there's one stitch. So I just wanted to make sure that I had that um, denoted with the stitch marker. So I'm hoping to have that done by Rhinebeck so that I can do that. So I'm probably not gonna be working on um, the green crest very much or the porto. So I'll probably mostly be working on the knit chat cowl and this one. And I have another um, skein of some yarn from Freckled Whimsy. So I'm, I'm planning on uh, maybe making another one. We'll see how I feel at the end. I, I usually don't make the same pattern twice. So this is kind of I guess it shows how much it's a fun pattern. So, um, oh yeah, and there's that. I'm excited. I got my short rows done back here. Um, so, yeah. So that's done. That is, uh, I did say I went down a needle size on that. So I am using a um, 3.25 and then for the collar, I used a 2.75, um, just so there was that uh, cinched inness with a smaller needle. So there is that. I think that's it. Yeah. So, um, books that I've read. Um, I do have to say, I did read uh, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and I could not stop listening to that book. It was a wonderful high fantasy book. Um, some people have said that there were naughty bits in it. There are some sex parts in it. it you know, it, it wasn't anything out of the realm of, of books that I read before, so I didn't think it was anything major, but if that's not your thing, you might want to skip it. Um, but it was a great high fantasy book. I cannot wait for the next one to come out. I've already pre-ordered the next one. Um, so if you want, check out Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. 
Um, and what have I been doing lately? Um, helping my parents move so that, um, you know, helping them, uh, working just the normal things. I did, uh, want to talk about, I did want to talk about a book that came in and I did make a dessert out of it. And I'm hoping to insert a video at the end of me kind of putting it together. Um, I got this book called Baking Yesteryear by Dylan B. Dylan Hollis, and he has Instagram reels that are just stinking adorable. And this book takes you from um, the 1900s to the 1980s. So, and then he has this worst of the worst section, which you'll have to buy to check out because there's some interesting things in there. Um, <laughs> But I did just make um, a dessert out of it. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Ah, there it is. I made the, whoa, Robert Redford. Look at that thing. Oh, just delicious. So um, it was wonderful. Uh, my husband, I told him, here, pick something out. I'll make it today. Um, so I made it yesterday. It was really good. Uh, so definitely enjoy that. There's a lot of different stuff in here. Grasshopper pie. Um, let's see what else. Uh, dream bars. Oh, there it is. The dream bars. Yeah. So check out this book. It's really fun. Um, and check out his Instagram reels. He is a hoot. So, um, have been enjoying him. So I definitely wanted to make sure to get this. Um, so fun times. And so that's about that. I do want to close out with talking about, um, some therapy talk and, you guys have probably seen on reels. There's a reel that people have been making and it's been just kind of wild out there. Um, I see it pop up all the time and it is people, somebody, you know, doing a craft of some kind. And then they're talking about a neurologist that, um, named Kelly Lambert and talking about how, when we do things with our hands, we're happier. And it is something that I talk to people about. Sometimes I'll say, you know, like, what do you, what do you do for fun? Do you do a craft? Do you have something that you do, um, without not, you not know, really thinking through the science of it, but knowing that I know for myself and, and you guys may know for yourselves that doing, um, doing a craft makes you happy, right? Knitting makes you happy or cooking or whatever it is you're doing. Right. So I, saw that uh reel over and over again and i thought well let's let's look into this a little bit more let's see if we can uh dive a little bit deeper into why because obviously the reel is only it's short it doesn't tell you you know why that is so um i'll just be looking down reading for my notes but um she does have a ted talk kelly lambert does which i will have linked below and it's called improving neuroplasticity so neuroplasticity if you don't know is uh, the neurons in our brain making new connections. And so more, the more we have of those new connections, the kind of the healthier our brain is. Right. And, um, she was talking about how the brain, uh, and the different parts of the brain are designed and evolved to move our bodies around. Um, and she talks about the different parts, um, like the cerebellum, which is the back, back, back part of our brain back here. Um, or what I call our lizard brain. It's, it's the first part from when we evolved. Um, and that's eight, that actually makes up 80% of the neurons in our brain. And it is, it is linked to the, uh, motor coordination in our brain. And then she talks about the stratum, uh, the motor cortex, and it's, it has a large proportion of that part of the brain is for our hands and movement because that's something we do all the time, right? We need our hands. And so a, a big part of that part of the brain is for that purpose. Um, and she was talking about how our hands are, or our behavior is an important part of our mental health. 
Um, she called it behavior cuticles, which I thought was cute for pharmaceuticals. And she talks a little bit about how um, there's been an increase in mental health issues and um, how we had gone from a society that was more active, physically active, doing things, gardening, walking more, um, and how now we're more sedentary and we sit in front of screens a lot. I know I'm, you know, I sit in front of screens all day long. So, um, so she was talking about how a hundred years ago, doctors were prescribing uh, knitting to women that they termed were quote, overwrought with anxiety. Um, generally, <laughs> I had to laugh at that part because generally uh, back then they would say that women were hysterical, which is not a word that I use in my practice as a therapist, but um, I like that she said overwrought with anxiety. Um, so she was talking about how there is, um, when we're, we're engaged in repetitive behavior, and she does talk about knitting specifically, um, that making loops out of loops, right? Um, that it being engaged in that repetitive behavior, uh, increases serotonin in our brains. And, um, and that, that serotonin can get increased when we're thinking about uh, a project, right? Um, and then when we're thinking about that in project. And so if you think about you know, when you go on Ravelry and you see a new project or a new um, pattern that just came out, right, you get kind of excited and that's that's then releasing dopamine into the brain. Um, and so I was wondering if, um, because dopamine is the pleasure chemical. Um, and so I was wondering if that's part of the reason that people have, uh, or myself included, um, get cast on itis <laughs> so much is because it's that release of dopamine. And so we really just want to cast on the thing. Um, and sometimes that kind of decreases as we get into the project. But um, that just made me think of cast on itis. And then, um, so then she was talking about how from there, um, when we're working on things, it calms and reduces um, stress hormones. And that stress hormone that we don't want to be high, but we, we see is higher in people that have depression and anxiety as cortisol. And so, um, she talks about knitting with friends and how, uh, knitting with friends. So if you think about the cows and how excited we get about knitting with people or meeting up with people or Rhinebeck, yay. Um, which, um, I'm looking forward to going to. Uh, so if you see me there, come say hi, I will have uh, magnets to give out. So I'd hope to see you if I can. Um, anyway, so uh, knitting with friends, she talks about that increasing our oxytocin, which is known as the cuddle chemical. Um, and she says it's important for fostering positive relationships and dis decreasing stress. Um, and is part of the reward center. Uh, which she says is the nucleus incumbent of the brain. So I don't want to bore you with too many technical terms, but she does say that it has rich connections to the brain area, uh, to movement in the frontal cortex. So that really important part that uh, engages our executive functioning. And that ability to kind of think through um, linear, linearly um, through a process um, so that's, that's that frontal cortex part. And then she says that we can, uh, the more that we can engage uh, in behavior where we can see the results of how our efforts um, play out, right? These circuits are considered, uh, are, or they're not considered, they're consolidating or fusing. Uh, and that can help us uh, in reminding us that we're capable, right? And so, you know, when we get to have a finished object and we put a picture on Instagram or a Ravelry or we show it to our friends, like that's that's in a really important part of our making and, and what makes us happy. And that is part of the efforts-based reward system. Um, and so there's more evidence of the um, effect and, and, and with that, it brings on more evidence of effective coping or more complex connections in the brain. So it's really important uh, for 
uh, our making to um, of what makes us happy with our making and so I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the science of that um, and to say that those reels are 100% true um, that that does make us happy uh, and it just brings so many parts of connecting with others or um, bringing us our own joy and our our own ability to kind of quiet our brains in that repetitive behavior and that's so important to uh, reducing ex reducing anxiety and stress um, so yeah that's that's an important part so I'd love to hear more about what you guys think about um, how you feel your making has improved your life so please please leave me some comments below I'd love to hear um, how your making brings you joy or how you have found that your making has uh, decreased your stress and anxiety and I will leave you today by the way that I normally do um, but first I'm going to say to please like subscribe and ring the bell um, I have a lot of viewers um, that aren't subscribed so if you can please subscribe or at least like if nothing else that would be great um, and welcome new people but uh, I will say to give yourself the same grace that you give to everyone else.